What is up ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to be going over five things you can be doing from home to keep your photography skills nice and sharp and possibly even improve in a few areas. So let's get into them. All right, so the majority of us have had a little bit of extra time at home right now and probably haven't been working as much as usual. So I wanna give you guys some things you can be doing at home to use your time wisely. Make sure you're keeping those skills up to par, make sure you're not leaving your craft in the closet and possibly even ways that you can improve on certain areas of your photography as well. Now, before we start this video, I wanna also give you a bonus tip. And a bonus tip is don't let friends and family cut your hair after a few drinks because you'll end up with this. So that's right, everybody, this is the new do. So thank goodness for the new CDN hat because that's gonna keep that covered up so we don't get too distracted here. So let's dive into the first thing that you can be doing at home right now. And I do this quite often. It is to grab my least used or least favorite lens that's usually just sitting in the back of the closet collecting dust. And I will throw that lens on my camera for the entire day and force myself to shoot with that lens. Quite often we get comfortable with our favorite lenses, whether that's like a 24 to 70 or some kind of zoom lens, because you can basically just stand wherever you are and zoom your lens to do the work for you instead of thinking creatively, moving your legs, getting different angles and things like that. So what I'll do sometimes is I'll just grab my least favorite lens, which to be honest is probably my 50 mil, and I'll just lock it on my camera for the entire day. And I will force myself to then go shoot things with that lens. It kind of gets me to think outside the box and shoot things differently than I normally do with a 35 or an 85. And to be honest, I think it overall helps improve my skills in certain areas. And if anything else, it's just fun to get yourself thinking differently and forcing yourself into a bit of a challenge. The second thing that you can be doing at home as well, and I do get a little bit of inspiration from One Peak Creative as they're doing their ad salation challenge, which if you guys haven't seen them yet, make sure you go check out their Instagram page. It's incredible what they're doing just for fun and keeping their skills sharp as well. But what that is, is I'll go around my home and I'll find a random object and I will pretend that that random object's company has reached out to me wanting photos. So for example, if you have 100 bottles of wine sitting in your cupboard like I do, then I'll grab one of those bottles of wine and I'll just pretend that winery has reached out for product photos, lifestyle photos, um, social media photos, things like that. And I will actually then take on that product and shoot it for a few hours. Just imagining what type of photos I would deliver to this person if they were my client. This is another way to get yourself thinking outside the box. And sometimes it's fun to just grab a really random item like that stapler or your coffee maker, you know, things that you don't think to shoot every day of your life, but those people do need photos as well. And because it's not what you're usually shooting, it is different and it will actually make you learn something new along the way as well. So I highly recommend just going through your house, finding something, staging some photos, do some flat lays, do anything you can with that product or item, whatever it may be, and just imagine that that is a client of yours. Next up is something I don't do often enough, which I should, and that is to change up your lighting. So if you are more of a natural light photographer, then challenge yourself to shoot with flash or strobes. And if you're primarily a studio photographer, challenge yourself to leave those behind and shoot natural light. And if you're just starting out in photography and you shoot natural light, you don't have flash, then try something different with lighting. Try night photography, long exposure photography, something that you don't need a whole lot of equipment, but just forces you to think differently as well. I find often we get stuck into our comfort zone, so we know what we're really good at and we just continue to do always the same thing, which is great, you're becoming a master in one thing, but while we have this time off, what better way to force ourselves to be a better overall photographer by using whatever light source that we have available and just practicing in all different aspects of lighting. I've definitely been working more on my video lighting lately, and this has been a whole new challenge in itself, so let me know in the comments below what you guys think of this lighting setup. Um, it's definitely not my strength doing video lighting. So again, it's something I'll be practicing more often and getting better at it along the way. Now, the fourth thing you can be doing from home right now, if you have yourself some extra time is to join a forum or a Facebook group. And the reason I say you should do this is because it's a good place to share your work with other creatives and ask for that constructive criticism or critiques on your work. Because often another thing we fall into with comfort 
is friends and family telling us that our work is the greatest thing they've ever seen, when in reality there's probably a lot of things we couldn't be improving upon. So by getting some different people's opinions on your work, you obviously have to take this with a grain of salt because there are those trolls on every Facebook group that are just gonna beak your work. But it can be really helpful if you do get somebody that gives you good feedback and it's something you can take home, take notes and actually improve upon. Another thing you can do is if you have a fellow photographer in your area that you look up to, heck, send them a message and just ask them what you suck at. I remember Brett Seeley did a photo about this, about fitness photography, and I actually sent him a message and I said, dude, tell me everything I suck at and I will take it the right way and I will approve upon those things. And that's exactly it. If you can get that feedback from someone who you look up to, then you're only gonna help strengthen yourself and become just like that person. Now the fifth and final tip I have for you kind of rolls from that last one, and that is to look at a photographer's work that you admire, or look at work out there if you're out at a mall or at a store and you see photography all over the place. Dissect those photos. Look at them differently than the average person. Try to guess where they're putting their lights, what equipment they're using, and how they're actually getting those shots. And then write it down, dissect it, and then try to recreate it if you can. I find this very helpful in improving my own photography is when you can learn about how other people are doing things and have that ability to just see, oh, they had a soft box here, they had a secondary light here, they had a rim light back here, and you can see these things in a photograph. It just helps you notice all of the small details in different photos, and it will then give you more ideas on how to elevate your work as well. I'm sure there's a hundred more things you can be doing at home right now to help yourself out, including your own marketing, social media, kind of going through the things that we often put on the back burner. But these are five specific things that I like to do often to keep my skills up to par so that when I get that call for a client shoot, I'm not just blowing off the dust and going into it rusty. These are things that we can just be doing every day and I encourage you guys to do it 100%. So I hope you guys find some value in these. By all means, try all five of them. Don't cut your own hair at home right now, especially after a few drinks. And if you guys like this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Let me know in the comments that you like it. I'll definitely make more like this. I look forward to making a lot more automotive based content soon as well. So stay tuned for that. And as always guys, I'll see you in the next video.